swapping upon you. Oh, you have not yet understood the shame. If you have fed with God's knowledge, if you have fed with God's understanding, then the new man in you will prosper. What kills the new man in you, whenever the new man is not fed,
always fighting for us. Heaven's angels all around. My delight is found in knowing that you are the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you. Come on everybody. At the mission of your greatness. In your name I will bow down. In your presence fear is silent. For you wear the victor's crown. Let your glory fill this temple. Let your power overflow. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you.
Jesus. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. exalted itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ must come down every stronghold must be broken and that is what is happening in Jesus name we are here to declare life unto you we are here to release the life of God unto you in Jesus name we're gonna sing that again wherever you are whether in your car or in your house wherever you're watching us from let's declare that in the name of Jesus yes every high thing Whatsoever exalted is so high above the knowledge of Jesus, we put it down in Jesus' name. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing, every high thing must come down. In the name of Jesus. the name of the living God in Jesus name. Father God you're welcome in this place. Lord Jesus you're welcome in this place. Holy Spirit of God you're welcome in this place. Angels of God come and minister with me and also minister unto the multitudes that are in the presence of God in Jesus name. Father reach where every man and woman is and touch them and bless them in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, you are once again welcome in the presence of God in Jesus' mighty name. This is our second service once again. And I believe that God is going to bless you. God is going to touch you wherever you are in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're at home, bring your family together and let's have service. Let us have service. Let us have fellowship in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's such a wonderful Sunday. We've seen God do great things and I believe that he's still doing greater things and he's going to do greater things in Jesus name. Yes, this is Life Restoration Nansana, Uganda where we are ministering the life of God unto your lives and we believe and know that your lives are going to be blessed in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The previous service that we ended were looking at we ended by seeing that it is very important to become wise and also to be conscious. When you become wise and you're conscious, you're gonna, your life is going to turn away from evil. And one of, what, what we've discovered also, that you're not going to be reckless and also you're not going to be careless. Because that is a stronghold also. That is a stronghold that holds people's lives by the devil hiding through foolishness and making people to become reckless and careless. 
and when you become reckless and careless you give room for foolishness to operate through your life and the devil hides in foolishness to destroy destinies we are still seeing how it is very very important for us to receive the wisdom of God that when we receive the wisdom of God the wisdom of God has a character that it brings in our lives which is the discipline of God and it is very very important for you to have the discipline of God in your life especially at such a season like this why do you need the discipline of God and that is what we are beginning to learn because when we are disciplined in God we begin to do right things in life and also we reach that level of focusing on the goals that God has laid down for our lives we make good decisions through the discipline of God in our lives and we avoid making bad or poor decisions that come with consequences immediately in our lives or later in our lives there are consequences that people have there are consequences that come out of bad decision and also there are consequences that come out of good decision so child of god where we are today it is important to have or to learn godly principles in your life because when you know what godly principles are in your life and apply them every day you'll get better you'll see success you'll see development in life very many people have not developed very many people are not seeing success in their life simply because they are not applying godly principles in their lives they are just living a life of just moving up and down in this world yet god has never created us just to move up and down there are purposes of god and plans of god that we must fulfill in our lives so as we continue in the service i believe as we learn more of what the discipline of god does in our lives that comes through wisdom i believe we are going to be more blessed and we're going to reach that level of achieving the goals that we must achieve in life in jesus name in the book of proverbs chapter 14 verse 16 is where we're going to begin from english standard version we've already seen it in the previous service but we'll, let's pick it up from that now in the book of proverbs chapter 16 chapter 14 verse 16 in english standard version the, it reads that one who is wise is conscious and turns away from evil but a fool is reckless and careless many times when you allow recklessness and carelessness to come into your life these become a stronghold that hold your life and where recklessness is and carelessness these two begin to fight against the truth of God in the lives of believers now child of God this is what I want you to understand we are believing God to fight against every kind of foolishness in our lives as believers so that we become wise believers who are conscious who turn away from evil for us not to be careless and reckless very many people are being affected by foolishness and to many people don't know that foolishness is a spirit and to many people don't know that what is affecting their lives is foolishness this is one of the greatest weapon the devil hides in to fight against what man is meant to be in this world you know the devil brings his lies through foolishness and when you begin to move in the lies of the evil and through foolishness your life will never take the right path We've seen already in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verses 2 that when you are wise, you choose the right road. When you are a fool, you take a wrong one. That means that the devil knows it very well that when he comes and makes you to do foolish things in life, you will ever take wrong paths in life. That means you will never have, you will never reach that level of achieving the goals that you have in life. People have hope that one day, one time, they will see, they will have achievement, they will achieve the goals they have in life, but it just remains on a level of hoping. But this is what I want you to understand. Everyone has goals. You have goals, I have goals. How do we reach that level of choosing the best goals in life and we see ourselves succeeding? This is where wisdom is important and also got the discipline in our lives. So when you are not wise and conscious, that means you're going to be reckless. You're going to be careless. You're going to make your life do things it's not supposed to be doing. And then what is going to happen? Your life is going to be ever 
moving against the truth of God. So as believers, through recklessness and carelessness that comes because of this spirit of foolishness that comes in people's lives because people have not taken time to be silent so that they receive the wisdom of God. Because we've already seen that in the book of Job, chapter 13, verses 5, that in silence, these silent moments, these quiet moments, will receive the wisdom of God. The Bible says in the book of Job, chapter 13, verses 5, that all that will be silent and it will be your wisdom. So people are not silent and the devil knows it that if he can make you a busy body, make you move up and down for you never to get moments of being silent, to get moments of being quiet so that the wisdom comes. He knows that the next level is going to be you being turning into a fall. Who is a fall? We've seen in the book of Proverbs chapter 28 verses 26 in English standard version that whosoever trusts in his own mind is the one who is a fool that means that when you put your own and when you base on your own understanding when you lean on your own understanding that turns you to become a fool because your own understanding is going to be connected to the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of this world is foolishness before the Lord as first Corinthians says chapter 3 verses 19 so why should you take wrong route why should you take wrong pass every time and again yet there is the wisdom of God that you can receive through these quiet moments there is a wisdom of God that you can receive through the moments of silence God wants us to be silent the more we are silent in God is the more we receive his wisdom this wisdom brings the discipline of God in us and when we have the discipline that means we're not gonna be reckless we're not gonna be care we are not gonna be careless but when the wisdom is not there and the discipline is not there recklessness and carelessness is gonna be a stronghold that is gonna come over your life as a believer and you're gonna be taken into captivity when you're in captivity of foolishness you will never have the knowledge of doing what is right in life this is when you start a business it fails this is when you start a career you struggle in it this is when you enter a marriage and you're not happy and things are not moving on well everything begins to fail simply because you are a captive through foolishness you have no knowledge of doing what is right in your life then the result is gonna be you're gonna be wise or clever in doing what is wrong We've seen that in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verses 22, in the previous verse, in the previous service. The Bible says, when we read from NLT version, in the same book of Jeremiah 4, 22, NLT, that my people are foolish, they don't know me. Say, yes, the Lord. They are stupid children who have no understanding. They are clever enough at doing wrong, but they don't have, they don't have, they have no idea they have no idea how to do what is right so that means that that is how the devil begins to fight in believers lives through foolishness making sure that you have no knowledge making sure that you have no understanding of what to do right in life but when it comes to things that are not benefiting your life when it comes to things that are not developing your life when it comes to things that can take you any further that is why you spend a lot of time that is why you put a lot of effort yet time is going you become so clever in wrong things so child of god listen to me very well god has come at such a time as this he wants you to overcome he wants you to be better he wants you to be above whatever has attacked you to become a testimony in your life in Jesus' mighty name. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 13, the Bible says, Therefore my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. These are days of wisdom. These are days of knowledge. These are days of having understanding. There are things you must understand. There are things that you must know as a believer in such a time as this for the devil not to hold you captive. There are things you must be doing in your life for you not to be a captive of what the devil has begun releasing unto the world. So, the devil holds people captive where knowledge is not because he knows it very well but the people who have the wisdom of god they have the knowledge and understanding of what to do 
in seasons so this season where people think that coronavirus or where the world thinks coronavirus has power you can overcome corona you can overcome covid you can be better in every area of your life but how can you be better you will be better when you're wise and when you're conscious ever turning away from the evil schemes of the devil that he lays down unto your life to turn you into a fool instead of your life operating in the wisdom of god because the devil knows it very well that when you receive godly wisdom you're going to receive the knowledge of god and the understanding of god which is going to lead your life to be focused on your vision did you know that every life that is living on this planet earth because it is God who created man, every life of a human being, there is a vision that God has laid down for your life. So many times when you're turned into foolishness, you never focus on your vision. You focus on things that never take you anywhere. That is why even vision is very important. Why? Vision is the focus of your life. Vision introduces you to the plans and the purposes that God has for your life. That is why where the vision is not, you're going to perish. All this that the devil does, taking you into foolishness, not giving you understanding or hindering understanding and knowledge in your life. He knows it very well that the more you become foolish, the far you'll be away from the vision that God has put inside of your life. And in the vision that God has put inside of your life, it carries the plans and purposes of God that you must be carrying out before you leave this world. So where the vision is not, your life is going to be destroyed. And when your life is destroyed, destroyed that means you will never have the knowledge at all in your life that is godly that will ever keep you as a spiritual person wisdom introduces the knowledge of God and the understanding of God that turns us to become spiritual believers and many times when we fall from this knowledge Many times when we fall from this understanding, we cease to be spiritual believers and we become carnal believers who are operating ever in foolishness. We become stupid, we become silly, we become so clever in things that are not right in our lives, in things that can't make us better in life. And what is right, we fail to do it. This is when believers begin to move up and down. This is when believers begin to skim themselves. This is when believers begin to do things that are not right. And at the end of it all, they think that God does not love them. At the end of it all, they think that God does not work in their lives. Why is foolishness so bad? Foolishness is like witchcraft. In the book of Galatians chapter 3 verses 1, because we must believe God never to be fools at such a time as this. There is a level where our lives must never be. Being careless, being reckless, so that we are held captive, so that we are in a stronghold that can't make us begin to discover and move in our destinies. So where foolishness is, foolishness is like witchcraft. In the book of Galatians chapter 3, verses 1, it reads, O foolish Galatians, who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. Know it very well that where wisdom is, wisdom will bring the discipline of God that will introduce the truth of God unto our lives. What we are in God through his wisdom and discipline results into the truth of God in our lives. What we become because of foolishness, foolishness will drive us to the lies of the devil. And where the lies of the devil are, there is destruction. Many lives are destroyed. Many lives are not doing what they're meant to be doing because they don't have the truth of God. So child of God, the time for truth is now. The time for you to do what is right in life is now. The time for you to develop. The time for you to become successful is now. There are things that you must never do in life again that cause you to be reckless and care and careless. There are things now you must begin doing that must bring development and success in your life. So now Paul looks at the Galatians. They are foolish. Truth is far from them. People who began in the spirit, people who are spiritual believers, can no longer operate in a spiritual way. Whatever now they are doing is carnal. And that is the joy of the devil. If he can turn you to become a carnal believer, 
He knows it very well when you become carnal. Everything you're going to do is going to be based on your own understanding. And remember, your own understanding has a connection to the wisdom of this world, which is foolishness before the Lord. And when you begin to operate upon your own mind, there are very many things you're going to miss out. You're going to be misled. You're going to take the wrong route. As we've seen that the wise take the right route in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verses 2. But the wrong people or the foolish people take wrong roads. So that means that what the devil is after, you never becoming what you're meant to become in life in this world. Yet what God is after, you to become what he has laid down for you to become in this world. So now Paul is telling the Galatians, oh you foolish Galatians who bewitch you, that you should not obey the truth. These are days to listen and to obey what the truth of God is saying unto your life. You know today, because of COVID-19, many lies have gone, have gone all over the world. People are following a lot of things. The devil is trying to prove to the people that God can't heal Corona, God can't heal COVID. The devil is trying to prove to the people that COVID is so strong. That is why lifestyle has changed. A lot of things have changed. Economies have been affected. Nations have been affected. Everyone is being affected. But I want you to understand this. There is the truth of God that God wants us to receive so that we overcome this situation, this circumstance, so that we overcome the lies of the devil, so that we overcome the attack of the devil. Corona, COVID-19 is never from heaven, it's from hell. He's, the devil is hiding behind this sickness so that he disorganizes the plans that God has for our lives. But God is going to win and because we are in God, we are also going to win. So now when you are turned to become a fool, the truth of God is far from you. And when the truth of God is far from you, what is going to happen? Verses 3 of Galatians where we are. The Bible says that you are so foolish. Having begun in the spirit, you are now made perfect by the flesh. There are things we are going to refuse of the flesh. We are going to go back to that standard. And this is the moment. Can you have quiet times in such a season like this? Can you have silent moments? Yes, you can. When we have quiet times and silent moments in our lives. Thessalonians says, chapter 4, verses 11, that we believers, we believers, we must aspire to lead a quiet life. To mind our own business. So that means that when we live this quiet life, we begin to concentrate so much on our lives. And as we concentrate so much on our lives, we are going to discover that there are things we've been neglecting to do. There are things that, there are areas in our lives that need to be improved. And that is what they call self-reflection. So as we take self, or as we reflect upon our lives, we're going to evaluate in our lives. And as we make evaluation, because now our own business that we must mind is our lives, especially as such a time as this then we are going to enter seasons of quietness what does quietness do in the book of isaiah chapter 30 verses 15 scripture says in the book of isaiah chapter 30 verses 15 now watch this in the book of isaiah the bible says chapter 30 verses 15 that thus says the lord the holy one of israel in returning and rest you shall be saved that means that now as we enter into these quiet moments where we receive the wisdom of god where we receive direction in life god wants us to rest in him god wants to save us that is why through quietness as scripture continues to say we receive more confidence in god and this confidence becomes our strength god wants you to be confident in him so that you receive more strength in him to make it and when the devil comes in through foolishness, he never allows people to concentrate on their own lives. He makes people to be busy. He makes people to concentrate on other things. Child of God, your life is important at such a time as this. There are many things in your life. You have a vision inside of you. How can your vision be revealed? How can your vision come forth? It will come forth when you allow the wisdom of God to operate in your life. And as wisdom operates, wisdom is going to bring is going to bring discipline in your life and as discipline comes into your life you will never become a fool you will ever be led by the spirit of wisdom which will make you better every time and again now paul looks at the galatians they have lost that standard of spirituality where foolishness is you can't be spiritual 
foolishness takes people off God's will foolishness pushes people out of the ways of God that make them to be spiritual people so when Paul looks at these people they are operating in foolishness whatever they are doing is wrong it's not right and then he tells them he begins to tell them that why why don't you obey the truth that means they had gone off the truth and then in verses 3 as he begins to, sh to, to tell them it shows you that they drifted from that standard of being spiritual and now everything was being done in flesh that means their understanding their doing of things had all become carnal and when you become carnal that means now the devil has enough room in your life to control you and even to influence everything that he wants to do into your life so when foolishness becomes now a stronghold over your life you fail to choose the best goals in life do you want to achieve the best goals in your life turn away from foolishness believe God to increase his wisdom upon your life because the more foolish you become that means that you are going to fail to choose the best goals in your life and also the ways that would have led you to these goals begin to be hindered because now foolishness has taken over and now what the devil wants is to push your life to begin to look to the world you will never look to the world and apply things that the world applies in life and become better as a believer that is going to be destruction that is going to be death and that is where most people are people are looking at the world and they think the world is doing better and they think the world the life of the world is better that is foolishness that has held you that is trying to show you that you can receive a better living as you look to the world and as you begin to do things as the way the world does them because when foolishness has made you a captive you become rebellious things concerning things that are godly you stop doing them and I've seen a lot of people when they reach that level when foolishness has held them as captive they stop doing what is godly in their lives child of God don't allow such a thing to happen to you at such a season like this are you a sower keep on sowing are you a prayer warrior keep on praying have you been reading the word read it more have you been believing in God believe more in God have you been giving your tithes give your tithes so whatever is godly have you been fasting first child of God whatever is godly have you been loving people keep on loving them don't cease to do what is godly in your life because that is what is going to maintain you to be a spiritual person not to be foolish to become carnal to look to the world to be corrupted by the systems of the world and to be destroyed in life like now we are under lockdown in our nation do you know to some people today is sunday yes i know church is closed to some are gonna give up prayer to some are gonna give up tithing to some are going to give up on believing in God and you're going to begin to believe in other things and ideas that the world is bringing unto your life and when your life reaches such a level of forsaking what God has done in your life or has been doing through your life to lift you up and you look to the world you are going to be like a bewitched believer in fact as Paul said oh foolish Galatians for you're going to be a foolish believer so child of God don't allow the devil to push you to that end because you're going to be outside of the will of God and when you're outside of the will of God you will never see your life prosper you will never see your life develop you will never see your life better all you're going to begin to see is trouble after trouble looking to the world and thinking that the life of the world can be better than the life you have you are going to become a rebellious child of God who has turned away from God. And what does the Bible say? When you reach a time and you can no longer be a spiritual person or a godly person and you have turned to become a worldly person, though you think you are in God, what happens? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah where we are, Isaiah chapter 30 beginning from verses 1. 
in Isaiah chapter 30 beginning from verses 1 the Bible says war to the war to the rebellious children now that means that foolishness begins to turn believers to become rebellious and when you are a believer in Jesus Christ and stop believing what has blessed you what has lifted you what has made you to become what you are in life and turn to the world what is going to become next is you being a rebellious child of God and now the Bible says you take counsel the Bible says the Lord war to the rebellious children says the Lord who take counsel but not of me that means now you're gonna to begin to inquire from the world how can I do this how can I live how can I survive and now what you're gonna do you're gonna to begin to apply what the world does to live which is gonna be so dangerous to your life when you apply the counsel of the world when you apply the counsel of the world because scripture is continues to say uh, but not of me who devise plans but not of my spirit that they may add sin to sin that means that you're, go you're gonna begin now to add sin upon sin what is sin here sin is anything against the will of God and remember this whenever the devil gets room to get into your life he's gonna make sure that you do things that are against the will of God in your life he knows it very well but when you do things according to the will of God you're gonna be better but when you do things which are against the will of God you're gonna be sinning time and again and then destruction is gonna knock at the door that is why to people who think the world can be better the world can be can bless them more than what god can do in their lives the bible continues to say in verses two that the, you who walk down to egypt and have not asked my advice to strengthen themselves in the strength of pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of egypt the world can't help you let's look to god god has all that you need in life Whatever you don't need, God doesn't have it. But what you need, he has it. So child of God, this is what I want you to understand. Let your confidence, let your trust, let your strength be in God. Yes, the world will talk. Yes, the world has the way it handles issues. But you're a believer. You trust in God. You are in God. Look to God. He will see you through. There are ways of God that you can apply in life that can make you to be better every time and again in life. But when you come off them because of foolishness, you're going to be a believer now who's looking to Egypt, who's looking to the world. You no longer need the advice of God, but you think you're going to be strengthened by the world. And then you're going to put even your trust in the shadows of the world. And then verse 3, the Bible says, Therefore, the strength of Pharaoh shall be your, your shame. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation. Many times when we go off God, the world ashames our lives. The world will humiliate you, which God can't. So that means that the believers who think that they, were, they are going to benefit from the world, who think that the world is going to make them better, they don't benefit anything from the world. They, what you thought was going to be help, what you thought was going to help you is turned into shame and reproach in your life. Why should you reach a level and you have shame in life? Why should you reach a level and you have a reproach in life? Because you drifted away from God because of foolishness. That is why it is important for you to be wise and conscious so that you develop the discipline of God in your life for you to be protected from the schemes of the evil one. For you to be protected from foolishness. Because like it, or, like it child of God or not, the devil can't be a help to you. He will bring shame and reproach unto your life. And when he brings shame and reproach unto your life, he's going to leave you there in shame and reproach. He's not going to help you. So when we receive this wisdom of God, this wisdom of God brings discipline in our lives and this discipline that we receive in life enables us to make good decision and through good decision we can have or we can achieve the best goals in our lives and these goals that we achieve in life when we move in them we are ever moving in right passes in right roads in our lives and the evil one who is the adversary who wants to devour our lives 
can devour our lives and this is what I, I want you to know the devil is roaming all around the world to look for whom to devour through his schemes of foolishness through his schemes of lies don't allow to be devoured by the evil one godly discipline when it comes into our lives it keeps us sober and vigilant these are days for you to be sober these are days for you to be vigilant as the bible says in first peter chapter 5 verses 8 that be sober in other words these are times for you to be alert be alert of everything around your life be alert even in your life these are not times to sleep these are not times to be weak at times to be alert and scripture continues to say be vigilant in other words watch out keep on watching out your life don't allow any recklessness and carelessness to come where your life is be alert time and again how are you gonna be alert you're gonna be alert in prayer you're gonna be alert in fasting you're gonna be alert by reading the Word of God you're gonna be alert by applying the principles of God in your life are days to be alert if you've never prayed more than ever before these are days to pray more than ever before if you've never given more than ever before these are days to give more than ever before plant your seeds believe in God ties be a giver be a person who loves good things and also good things to happen unto other people and see time to watch out is now this is not time to relax you know when you relax you're gonna stop doing what you have been doing that has been taking you to another level your adversary scripture continues to say the devil walks up and down like a lowering lion seeking whom to devour and you know that is what the devil is doing especially when covid 19 began he hid in it he's moving all around the world he's looking now for little children he's looking for the old he's looking for the big and the small he's looking for the rich and poor he does not discriminate he's looking for whom to devour so when you lack that discipline of god in your life you are gonna give room for the evil one to come and devour your life you're gonna give room and to him to come into your life I love the story of the book of Job Job chapter 1 verses 7 God asks the devil where he's been coming from and he's not ashamed to respond to God to tell him in NIV version he tells the Lord I've been roaming all all throughout the earth and in NLT version he says I've been patrolling the earth watching everything that is going on this is what I want you to understand. The evil one who has this world under his control, as First John 5.19 says, he is a devourer. He is a thief who steals. He is a killer who destroys. So whenever he's walking up and down, whenever he's patrolling this earth, whenever he's moving to and fro, back and forth, he is busy altering and destroying destinies of people he is busy destroying lives of people he is busy devouring stopping people to become what they are meant to become he is busy turning people into foolishness so that he releases carelessness and recklessness as a stronghold over people's lives that is why as a believer be sober be alert watch out in your life and as you're watching out that means that now you're going to give room to godly discipline in your life and when you give room for godly discipline into your life this godly discipline is going to turn your life into submission unto the lord let us submit unto the lord don't submit under anything don't submit under sickness and disease refuse to be sick don't submit under the influence of the evil one submit under god these days are days of submission when we submit through godly discipline before the lord this submission brings humility in our lives and where humility is the grace of god begins to function in us these are days to allow God's grace to function in your life because as the grace of God begins to function and operate in your life you're gonna be humbled under the mighty hand of God I love what the psalmist says in Psalms chapter 91 verses 1 the Bible says that he who dwells under 
the mighty hand. He who dwells, he who dwells in the secret place of the Lord Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That means that when we are under the mighty hand of God, we abide under the shadow of God. And this shadow of God becomes our protection. The shadow of God becomes the cover of God over our lives. So child of God, allow the godly discipline to make you to be submissive unto the Lord. Where you will be humbled under the mighty hand of God. So that the mighty hand of God becomes a protection over your life. The evil one who is roaming up and down. The evil one who is looking for whom to devour. You will be able to overcome him in Jesus' name. You will stand against his works and against his evil schemes in this world. This mighty hand of God is what you need over your life in Jesus' mighty name. This mighty hand of God is what you need upon your life in Jesus' mighty name. Because his mighty hand not only protects us, but his mighty hand also exalts our lives. Do you want to be exalted at such a time as this? This is the due time for you to be exalted. This is the time for you to be exalted. There are many things you've been doing in life wanting exaltation. There are many things you've been believing for wanting exaltation. The hand of God can exalt you. The hand of God can lift up your life. The hand of God can begin to operate so mightily in your life and it can begin to take care of whatever you need. That is why as the devil begins to roam up and down looking for whom to devour. As we've seen in the book of Peter, the Bible says in verses 7, the same book, what's this? In verses 7, the Bible says, casting all your cares unto him for God cares for you. Now, child of God, I'm not telling you to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God because of whatever is happening. But I want you to understand this, that as we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God we are exalted by God taking care of us may God take care of you may God take care of your children may God take care of your life in Jesus mighty name so as God takes care of our lives in due time we are exalted and then when we are exalted this godly discipline in our lives enables us to live a godly life in the midst of the trials that come our way Yes, coronavirus is a trial, but we're going to overcome it in the name of Jesus Christ. But there is no way you can overcome trials that come your way when you don't have godly discipline in your life. It is the discipline of God that enables us to overcome in these trials that come our way. There are very many things that have risen because of COVID-19. There are very many things that are happening because of COVID-19. As I speak right now, very many people are sick. As I speak right now, very many people are losing jobs. As I speak right now, very many people have died. As I speak right now, very many things have been altered in people's lives. COVID-19 has altered the way how people live. COVID-19 has altered lives. But as a servant of God, I stand to say, you COVID-19, you have no power. If you have any sick person who is sick of COVID-19, I command healing upon that person in Jesus' name. If there are headaches that have been uh, that have been coming upon people's lives, uh, high temperatures in the name of Jesus Christ, lungs being blocked, you COVID-19, you are an enemy, you are an adversary. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you out of people's lives in Jesus' name. Father, touch your people in hospitals, in homes, touch them, wherever they are. Let they be healed. Let us begin to hear testimonies of people recovering from COVID-19 in Jesus' name. Death go out of people's homes. Death go out of hospitals in the name of Jesus. Father, may your hand reach in hospitals and touch people who are sick and heal them in Jesus' name. Child of God, this is what I want you to understand. That when we are under this mighty hand of God, God takes care of our lives. We are exalted. This mighty hand of God is a shadow. Is a shadow upon us. This mighty hand of God becomes a cover over our lives. And as God covers us, then wisdom begins to operate through our lives. And one of the characters of wisdom in our lives is the godly discipline that comes into our lives that enables us to live godly in the midst of trials that have come in our lives. Then we go through these trials. 
That is why Paul looks at the Galatians. He looks at them. They can't no longer live a godly life. They are, they are, he calls them foolish. They that began in the spirit are now in the, in, are now in the physical. Child of God, I speak this to your life. Stay as a spiritual believer and see you will overcome whatever has come your way you will be stronger than before that life of god that you have is the best life that you can have in this world don't allow foolishness to take you from a godly life and to put you into a life that is worldly that is going to destroy you so no matter how hard things are no matter how tough things are when we'll receive this godly discipline in our lives it sees us through tough times it sees us through hard things in first peter chapter 4 verses 12 the bible says that dear friends don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you now whatever is happening look at it as something very strange unto your life stand strong and believe god and see the salvation of god because god is with you he has not forsaken you god is with you he's gonna move with you god is with you we saw something in the in the previous in the previous in the previous service and we're gonna see it again you know when we are with god he will always be with us in trials in tough times in in seasons that seem not to be working in our lives he was with us this mighty hand of god that begins to bring godly wisdom that begins to bring the discipline of god through the wisdom of god in our lives this hand of god will keep us safe that is why the psalmist says in psalms 23 as i'm closing that though i pass through the valley of the shadow of death that means now because of whatever is happening and the devil thinks he has overcome uh -uh, it may be a valley of death people are dying businesses are collapsing people are not doing well finances are drilling from people's lives it is a it is the valley of the shadow of death what happens to you because the mighty hand of god is upon you what is going to happen you will not fear evil you're not going to run away from evil but you're going to go through evil in jesus name and the bible says for the lord is with you the lord is with you child of god but the hand of god upon your life is proof that god is with you and because god is with you verses 5 see what the bible says that god prepares before you oh god prepares before you in your life he prepares a table in the presence of your enemies i've been telling people and i'm going to speak this again the devil has a table he has put you on his table he's saying that you must die of coronavirus he's saying you must be sick he's saying you must be chased off your work he's saying that your, your your business must not prosper he's saying that your children must not go to school that is the table of the evil one but the table of god that is going to prepare before the enemy whatever the devil has stopped is what god is going to give you whatever the devil is fighting against is what god is going to bless more there is a table of god that has been laid before you in jesus name that table has testimony that table has good news that table has life that table is gonna make you to be exalted that table is gonna turn around your life in jesus mighty name god is gonna anoint your life and you are gonna overflow with testimonies with blessings god is with you child of god and then in verses six what is so amazing after all this has happened a person who was in the valley of the shadow of death now the goodness of god and the mercies of god begin to follow you i stand to declare in jesus name in this season when people think that coronavirus is going to increase and increase and kill more people i stop that in jesus name i speak as a prophet of god i stand on this altar and i speak unto your lives you are sick be healed in jesus name i speak into your houses i speak 
into your lives i speak into the lives of your children i speak into the lives of your husbands and wives i speak into the lives of your families in jesus mighty name god is fighting for you right now god is fighting for you right now god is fighting for you right now i start to speak and i declare in jesus mighty name god is fighting he's fighting for you. i stand as a servant of god in jesus mighty name you will not die. You will live in Jesus' mighty name. The devil is being defeated in Jesus' mighty name. Darkness is being pushed aside right now in Jesus' mighty name. God is fighting. God is fighting Corona. God is fighting against the virus. God is fighting against the demons that are flying in that virus in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. To you be the praise. To you be the glory. People receive life. People of God be healed. In Jesus' mighty name. Wherever you are. Whether in hospital. Whether in your houses. Whether in cars. Be healed in Jesus' name. Wherever you are. You are being healed in Jesus' name. This is your season. This is your season in Jesus' name. You are not going to die. You will live in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. What that God is doing, He's fighting against the darkness, He's fighting against the evil one in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, declare these words I shall not die in Jesus' name. Yes, you will live in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, let your healing power right now begin to touch the in Jesus' name. in your families, life in your businesses, life in your work. Let there be life of God upon your lives in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This is what I believe. 
you will live to do great things in Jesus name God is gonna turn you to become wise and conscious there are good decisions that you're gonna make in life that are gonna lead you to the best goals of your life father touch every man and woman that are watching me at such a time as this protect every man protect every woman protect the boys and girls oh God in Jesus name may God bless you let there be increase of life in Jesus name today is Sunday and this is our second service wherever you're watching me from it's time to give we're gonna give our tithes we're gonna give our offerings we're gonna plant our seeds when we give tithes the devourer is rebuked out of our lives and God releases a blessing upon our lives as we give our offerings and we don't have enough room to contain the blessings of God upon our lives when we saw our seeds, divine doors open. There are doors that must be to your might, not according to your power, but according to the Spirit of God. So wherever you are, get a hold of your ties, get a hold of your offering, get a hold of your seeds, and begin to give your seeds and begin to plant your offerings. Give, plant your seeds, give your offerings. Give your tithes in Jesus' name. There is that number that is running on the sky over them in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. And keep Father, bless your people as they are giving in Jesus' name. Shine upon your people and be gracious to every man and woman, Lord. May your face be turned towards them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Give them peace. Bless them, Lord. Let there be never, let you will never be in scarcity. May the Lord bless you with finances in Jesus' name. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Be gracious to you. Yes, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost. shine upon you you and your children it is well it is well with you it is well with your health it is well with your work with your businesses it is well it is well with your lives people of God and I prophesy this in the name of Jesus go see the goodness of God and may the mercies of God and the goodness of God follow you all the rest of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Yes, God is a good God. We want to thank Him. And this is what I know. It is well, child of God. Yes, I know they've closed the buildings of the church, but the church has not been closed. You are the church, I'm the church. We are the temple of the living spirit of God. So as we continue to believe in God and to receive his wisdom, we shall come out of whatever trial has come our way strong because the discipline of God will see us through in Jesus' name. Keep on doing the right thing. And before we say the grace, whosoever is watching me, I want you to do this in your house. Lit an altar. And pray with your children and your husband and your wife and whosoever is in that house. Pray. Yes, for this 42 days. Pray. 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 Lit up that altar. God will answer prayer. Corona will never be in your house. It will never be in your house. 
Corona will never destroy what belongs to you. God will shield you. So wherever you are, beginning from now, lit up an altar in your house. Every time and again, with the people you stay with, and pray and look unto God, He will save you. He will come and save you. In Jesus' mighty name, He's with you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for viewing in. We shall come back to you again on Wednesday. In Jesus' mighty name. And I believe God will bless you big time. Stay strong. Better things are ahead of your life. In Jesus' name. Till we meet again. Bye-bye. God bless you.